So this is where things get a bit interesting, tad bit. So we got insert operation being done, we got update operation being done, delete one and delete all is also being done. And the reason why I showed you delete all, so that we can give it, get a little bit friendliness towards this bson.d that you cannot, you can actually pass nothing inside it and uh, therefore it gives you result, it selects basically all. Now the one operation that is remaining is the read operation. And by the way, hey there everyone, Hitesh here, back again with another video in the Golang series. I'm pretty sure you know me by now if you are watching this video. So hey, hi, drop me a hello on Instagram too. Now let's go ahead and see that how we can create a read operation and read operation can be done via the filter as well. That is easier one, but if you want to grab uh, just all of them, then it gets a little bit tricky, especially when you're using the core driver of the MongoDB. Because if you're using ORM or something, these situations are already being taken care in those cases. Uh, not here, not in the drivers when you're using something like this. So let's go ahead and see that what we want to do. Uh, we want to get all movies from a database or Mongo, whatever you say that. So we're gonna go ahead and create a simple method and we're gonna call this one as get all get all movies or movie, however you like to go with that. And there we go. Okay, so this one is going to be a little bit tricky. For this, I have to actually uh, go through into the documentation and these are not the documentation of Golang or anything like that. These are actually blogs from MongoDB. And a big shout out to the MongoDB team that they have composed this really nice crafted blog and they have given you so much of detail. I'll simplify it down a little bit further down so that it's much more easier for us. So we're gonna go directly into the section uh, where it says read all document from the collection. Now in the read all document collection, we can see that we use this uh, episode collection. This is basically a collection what we are referring so far. And it has a method dot find. It pass on a context and our context is dot background, which we are gonna be using. And the same thing bson dot m and we pass nothing inside it. So that's how we are also going to do it. But interestingly, what you're going to see that it returns you back a cursor. Now cursor is a tad bit different, so let me show you that. Uh, assuming no error happens, the result will exist in a MongoDB cursor. Now, what is this cursor? Now cursor is this big gigantic object on which you can loop through, but this is not exactly the data that you want. It's a whole lot of data and looping through it will give you some of the data. So let me explore this a little bit further down. So notice here, if I go up here in this section, it says, hey, you have to defer and close the connection. Surely we'll do that, no problem in that operation. In fact, we should be doing that in all of the values wherever we are inserting and all of that, we should be doing that, we'll do that now that we are aware of it. Now notice here it says that if you have cursor, this cursor has a property of dot next. In case you've worked with linked list, or probably not, that's fine too. Uh, this is kind of a special object which has this dot next property if the next value is available for us. So we can use this to loop through the values and we can create a simple episode which is bson.m type. Uh, we'll create our own variables, of course, of the same type. And if there are errors, we will just avoid it. If there are no errors, we'll work through that. Now notice here a little bit here that I talked a little bit into the if and else syntax that yeah, these kinds of things do happen if error equals cursor.decode and all of that value. So at the same time, this is a really common syntax, especially with the pro coders, they use this a lot, that on the go, they declare the variable as well as treat that into an if and else conditional as well. So uh, again, using this or doing them in a separate line, totally up to you, no big deal. Now that we have all of this knowledge, let's try to utilize that. And again, one more thing I would like to give you a little bit onto that. Uh, I studied that in the documentation, this is the one. So we have an array or kind of a slice of bson.m type and this is something interesting. Uh, the result is going to get back into this format, okay? So this is again here, bson.m. So this is exactly what we know about that. Okay, so a couple of interesting stuff. Uh, let's go ahead and work on with that. First and foremost, we need a collection. So we already got the collection. It has a property dot find. We just saw that. It requires you to pass on a context. We'll use the context dot background. And then you have to provide that what is going to be the filter. We know that if I go ahead and say uh, bson dot d or m, whatever you like to use. If we go ahead and pass it on an empty parameter, that means uh, I don't have any filter to work on with. You can just directly go ahead and select everything of that. What it gives you back is a cursor, or you can call it as cur for short, or you will also get an error, probably. Now, moving further, cautiously, of course, we're going to say that if error is not, not equals to nil, 
if that means if it is nil we're going to go ahead and say hey go ahead and do a fatal which is almost kind of a hitting the panic button or panic code in this case now that we have this cursor we have to declare a variable so we're going to call this one as uh, movies yeah that's fine and this movies is going to be an array of type m remember we have the bson.d but since we are using this primitive package we can go ahead and just like we have primitive.a, we have primitive.m or d, whatever you're using, uh, just be consistent uh, from here onwards. In the queries, you can use bson.dm, whatever you like, but from here onwards, since we are creating a variable of that type, that means we have to use this one. Okay, now that I have my variable and I also have my cursor, all I have to do is loop through inside it. So we're gonna use a for loop, but in the style of while loop. Remember, we talked about that in uh, the while section we studied a, a little bit while ago. So we're gonna go ahead and work with that. So this cur or the cursor has a property of dot next, and it will keep on giving you the result as much as it has the next value. Now notice here something interesting I'll bring you back. You also have to pass on a context here, which I'm pretty sure you might have missed. I missed that in the first red. So yeah, this is what you have to do. So this needs to go ahead and say context.background or you can use context.todo in case you are not sure for that. Okay, now let's go ahead and do that into separate lines. We are not gonna go ahead and just keep on doing that in the one go, just like the documentation says. So we're gonna go ahead and say uh, that we are gonna create one movie because this movies is a whole, list of movies so we're going to just have this one again we're going to say bson.m make sure you are consistent from here onwards so this primitive.m and this bson.m are almost kind of a same but i realized that when you create this bson.m it gives you a whole lot of errors so using the primitive is kind of a better approach uh, but let me know in the comment section if you get a little bit of a de uh, different result i'm still digging up more into this because this is like the code drivers written specially for the golang uh, so I'm still digging up into that. But again, this always works for me at least. Okay, so what we're gonna do is uh, now we need to have an error uh, because remember, the way how they are also dealing up with that is based on this error. So we're gonna go ahead and work on this part now. Let's go ahead and see that. Uh, let's go ahead and create an error. And uh, this error will be coming up based on the cursor. So cursor will try to decode the value. It is almost like what we used in the JSON and all of that. So it will try to decode. Whenever we decode, we pass on a reference that if you decode, use my structure to decode that. Since we don't have a structure, we have a movie variable here. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and use that. So we are gonna pass on a reference. So let's go ahead and pass on a reference of this movie up here. Okay, this either is going to decode and this movie will be fulfilled with the values or in case it falls into an error, then this is going to be the error. So let's proceed cautiously. We're gonna go ahead and say if error is not equals to nil, that means if it is equals to nil, we're gonna go ahead and do a fatal thing, which is just breaking up the code. Now, if that is not the case, that means, okay, this movie is being filled up. Now, all I have to do is use this variable and push this into an array. We have already done that. So we're going to say that, hey movies, I want to go ahead and append into movies. What do I want to append? I want to append movie. There we go. And uh, once I'm done with this loop, uh, they actually said that you should do it above, but anyways, wherever you do the differ, we have already studied that quite in depth. So we're gonna go ahead and say, hey cursor, uh, you need to just go ahead and close. And in the close, we have to pass on the context dot background. There we go, nice and easy. Now, obviously I want to return this entire array movies and I know that this is of type of primitive M. So we're gonna go ahead and say that I will return you a value inside this. So we need to pass on a signature that what kind of value you'll be returning. And this is my value. And you can go ahead and use the same that we use in the code itself that in case you are in that I want to use this bson.m and array also should be of bson.m type. You can go ahead and use that. I'll be using the primitive. Uh, I found that this is more reliable, at least for me. So we're gonna go ahead at the end of it that, hey, just go ahead and return this movies. There we go. So I told you this is not really tough. This is a little bit more involved. And now that you are aware of it, the only thing that you have to keep in mind is that you don't get returned the actual values. You get a return of a cursor which is a type of MongoDB object and you have to loop through and uh, pull out the values from it. That's pretty much it, told you. It's really simple, it's just a little bit of more involved. 
So now that hopefully all of our MongoDB helpers are all done, now we need to go ahead and write all the helpers which are going to extract values from the request.body or the values and all of that. Let's go ahead and do that in the next video. Thank you.